What do we got here? Oh, just got home with a new bike. It's pretty great. I'm very bike. happy with it. So this is a 22 uh, Rebel 1100 automatic. I've, uh, I've never had an automatic bike before and I thought I would try that out this summer. So uh, it's got cruise control, automatic, it's very chill. And as is tradition, we already have a stack of parts waiting to go on it. You know, because we can't just like leave shit alone. We're smarter than the people that design these things. So we have to fuck with it. Yeah, we know what's best. We know what's best. We'll take it from here. Speed it up, 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 go faster, ay, go faster, ay, go faster, ay, go faster, ay. We'll see if this thing starts up and runs right today. Or if it's mad that we brought a new girl home. normal cold start. It's a good thing we waited until it's freezing again to go and pick up a new bike. My thingies were fine, but I almost froze my toes off on the way home. He had to put his Crocs in sport mode. Change that out. Yep. Get a windshield. It's already there. New pipes. Go get those. We already have them. All with an automatic transmission. What's your first thoughts on that? It's pretty solid. The launch on it is very predictable. And I mean, it's just like driving an automatic car. It, it might not do the exact thing that you want it to be doing, but it does a predictable and efficient thing. This, so, this is your first automatic yeah. motorcycle experience. Yeah, I mean, I've had dozens of bikes and I've never tried an automatic. So I figured it was worth a shot for the, you know, for the commuter for this summer. What better time to try out an automatic? I bet that felt weird. Not shifting. It's, it's awkward. I, I kept reaching for a non-existent clutch lever. It's just like driving a manual forever and then hopping in an automatic car. You, an automatic you do car. the thing. Manual. 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 We try to avoid things that are missing. If yeah. they forgot to install a whole pedal at the dealership, what else could they have forgotten? You know, I don't, I don't want that one. It's obviously defective. So got the new bike in the garage. Haven't even put 20 miles on it, but as is tradition, we have a pile of parts already waiting. Shout out to Life of Birch. If you haven't seen his channel, he does a lot of product reviews and he's responsible for already putting a dent in my wallet before I even brought it home. We're gonna go ahead and put a few personal touches on this thing, because right off the bat, it's too quiet. The mirrors look like Mickey Mouse ears and we need a little bit of windshield. It's still pretty cold here. <laughs> so a little wind protection will help. And it'll be a little more comfortable for long trips. You know, we got that 200 mile commute most days, so a little bit of wind protection goes a long way. First up on the list is the exhaust. We're gonna be taking that thing off and replacing it with this muffler. I call it a loudener. You know, this is the Radiant Cycles Shorty GP. And it does have a little bit of a baffle in there, but it's a lot more open. We'll let that thing breathe a little bit. <laughs> All right, let's figure out how to get that big dumb muffler off there. What do we need, Bean? Do you know what we need? What is that? Is it a 12 mil? Yeah. Touch your chin. 12 mil. Fight. Got the bottom loosened up pretty good. I don't think they need to come all the way out. Got the top one out, so it should just pull. Is it rolling? Mm-hmm. Better set my parking brake. <laughs> See, this is a performance modification. You know, this is this is a good. It's good, like 30 pounds. So. You know, this is obviously a machine oriented towards peak performance. So we gotta, you know, weight reduction is important. Can't ever find a 10 mil around here. So order a big old pack of 10 mils. 
you can do that. You can just get a 10 pack of 10 mils on Amazon. Let's slip this thing on there. I painted the band clamp black because it was chrome for some reason. Hmm. We still got the stock donut gasket on there. It's gonna be in the way. We need that off. If you thought we were gonna set a record for how long we could go without hitting a new vehicle with a hammer, not today. Let's see what this thing sounds like. to an actual full exhaust at some point. I do really like the Vance and Hines setup, but for now, that's good. Let's take a look at this windshield. Ooh. enough coverage for the summer months. Probably go to something bigger once it gets colder again, but that's a good start. Let's get these stickers off the tank. I hate these stickers that come on every gas tank of every bike ever, so I'm gonna try to get these off without damaging the paint at all. Heat gun helps a lot with that. You wanna warm it up just enough that like, you can still hold your hand against it. Like, you don't want it to be hot. Just, just warm enough that it feels warm when you're touching it. Don't stay in one spot because you'll burn shit. You don't use these to warm your shoes up. Just keep it moving steady, warm it up nice and easy. Potato, what the fuck are you doing, man? What's wrong with your dogs? That's pretty warm, let's see if we can get them off of there. Is it warmed up? It lets go just nice and easy and comes off in one good piece. Hardly any residue left behind. Uh, this is a brand new bike, so they came off pretty easy. If you got an older bike, gonna have a bad time. Let's get this adhesive off. Grab the adhesive remover of your choice. I'm a goo gone kind of guy. A little microfiber. Try to do straight lines instead of circles. Circles make swirl marks. Boom. It's like there was never anything there. Goo gone. Good shit. Oh. Since this paint's in really good shape, you know, it's brand new. It doesn't need any correction. We just need to go ahead and get it protected. I'm gonna use my go-to. This is Shine Armor's Graphene Ceramic Spray. It gives a really good protective coating. It's, think of it like a really good spray on wax. It goes on real easy in one thick coat. And then you just let it sit for a minute and buff it back off. And it leaves a really good uh, finish. It's really good at repelling water. So if you're worried about anything like water spots, stuff like that, uh, water rolls right off of this stuff. It's pretty great. I'll leave a link in the description. Uh, use our code to get 20% off of any order. Get you some. Uh, I want to get rid of these Mickey Mouse ear mirrors and go to some bar end mirrors. But before we bother doing that, let's switch to the grips that we want. These grips are, they're not heated. And heated grips are nice up here. Since the Burb is not the daily anymore, and it has heated grips on it, uh, we're gonna take those off of there. But that is called cannibalism. And swap back to some normal grips on here and move the heated grips onto the new Rebel. So let's get these things off. If you caught the last episode, we already undid a bunch of the wiring on here in preparation for this. When we woke the bird back up and did the spark plug change, we undid the wiring while we had the tank off. So the wiring is just loosely ready to go here and this should just... Okay. 
pop right off. And we got some regular Renthal Superbike grips to go back on here. <sighs> so to make grip installs a little easier, take some long zip ties and stick them through. And that relieves some of the surface tension of the inside of the grip against the you know, science. It makes science happen and the grip goes on easier. So it slides on the zip ties instead of gripping on the grip. <sighs> end down here. Go ahead and pull the zip ties out. So now that those grips are swapped out, we can take a look at the Rebel and see about getting them onto it. The heated grip is a little like it just goes on too easy. So we're gonna have to get some super glue, JB Weld, whatever, and make sure that doesn't go anywhere. Why are they that one's a little bit more snug, but we're still gonna glue it in place because it does have some rotation to it, but it's on there. So we can go ahead and wire them up. Potato, top tier fans. Take me a second to figure out what I did with this wiring here. Oh, I know what I did. So on the Blackbird, I had the heated grips and phone charger both wired into a relay, but we don't need that on this bike because we're using a smart phone charger module that will only charge when the bike is running anyway. We don't need to use this relay and we can get rid of that. Pop the seat off. We gotta remove this little box under here. There's a little storage area to get to the battery. We gotta pull this box out. So it's just a pair of Phillipses there and there, I think. The things I think are holding it in there are out. And that is it. So just those four Phillipses and then we've got the battery right there. And to route the wires from the handlebars to the battery, we also need to remove the tank. Pop these bolts right here. see what kind of wiggle room that gives us. So that there gives us all the wiggle room we need to be able to route cables inside along the stock wiring harness and down to the battery. I think I've got the controller figured out. If you're playing along at home, this is what I modified the bracket to look like. So on the Burb and on most normal bikes, you'll have these two bolts right here for the clutch reservoir. And that's what it usually mounts to. And this bracket here is longer. It's got a bolt here and another tab here. I ground it off right there because this bike doesn't have, you know, a clutch reservoir, it's automatic. So there's nowhere for that to bolt. So I'm actually using the brake reservoir on the right side. I'm pulling the top bolt out and slipping this in there. And then that top bolt going through it, kind of like that. All right, so instead of it being on the left side and pretty accessible with a left thumb, it's a little bit of a reach. It's very manageable and it's going through this upper bolt for the brake reservoir. That should be a good spot. Now we just gotta finish routing the wires and, uh, and hook it to the battery and it'll be good. Easy day. We just gotta route all these wires. It's pretty straightforward. If you've never installed these before, it's it's super easy. They, they all plug into each other and then a separate harness just goes to the battery. It's pretty straightforward, so let's get it. Got the cables routed. We're hooking it up to the battery and before we make our run to go get whatever adhesive we're gonna secure the grips with, probably some super glue. I don't know, we'll take a look when we get there. We're gonna go ahead and make sure that we do actually have power and that they're working properly and that we didn't just waste a couple hours. Ugh. Man, I can't get the ground back on. 
it's so far in there that like, no, it's not on at all. Ben, what do you got? It's a zip tie. Is that a good zip tie? Oh yeah, delicious. Oh, what a stupid problem to have. The nut somehow flopped over always. I don't know how this has happened, but it's dumb and I hate it. There we go. Perfect. All right. Batteries hooked back up. We got power. Let's see if the heated grips work. <gasps> Look at that. Give it a second. Make sure that it's actually warming both of them up and that they work. And then we'll go get some adhesive because they're both just not quite a friction fit. And once we've got them glued in place and we know how much slack we need in the cables, uh, we can finish securing the cables. Feel it. Can you tell oh it's warm? God. It's quick. They get warm quick. So we're good. Everything's wired up properly. And it's also, you'll see this green LED right here means that it has acknowledged that the battery is being discharged because the bike is not running. And after a little while of that green light flashing, it'll say, all right, the bike's not running. We don't want to kill the battery and it'll turn them off. Really nice setup. I highly recommend these Oxford grips for any bike at all. I'll post a link in the description. If you need heated grips, go with these. Let's go get some adhesive and uh, finish this thing up. One hour later. We've got our super glue of choice. I like this Loctite super glue gel control. Pretty thick stuff. Leave a pretty good dabble. Get her a good twisty up on there. Nice. Make sure that it winds up where we want it. With the cable right about there so that when we turn it, it doesn't catch on anything. And do the other side as well. And then after a little while for that all to dry, we'll go for a ride. See if all of this shit made a difference. So after messing with the mirrors, I've decided not to run the aftermarket one that I picked up on the driver's driver side. On the throttle side, there was just no way to keep it from interfering with the throttle. Kit comes with a bunch of stuff that you can try to make it work, but in the end, it is a universal kit that, you know, isn't always gonna work universally. On the left side though, we do have just the one there. You already get better visibility behind you for it being way out here instead of up here, just looking at your shoulder. That one already gives way better visibility than the stock ones did combined. You're only legally required to have one. I'm a really good lawyer. And I place a very low importance on it anyway because I just turn and look where I'm going. Uh, Mirrors are cool for situational awareness, but I I, I, I don't really use them that much. I, I just look around. So mirrors, check. Windshield, check. Exhaust, check. I've already got it loaded up with my choice of tank bag. Uh, this big Cortec bag and it expands up and very functional. These are some universal saddlebags. They're all right. Again, universal fitment. They're a little fucky. They worked really well on the Blackbird. They, they're they all right on here. They'll do until I get the setup I really want. I've got a mount on the way from T-Rex Racing to be able to run my big, dumb top box. And that's what I put my backpack and everything in for rides to work. I don't like wearing a backpack on long rides. It gets old. Anything you can do to make a several hour ride a little bit more comfortable, it's nice. It's pretty well equipped. I mean, it's ready to ride to work as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, let's see if we can go on out and catch a little ride. came in. The one I'm most excited for is this big box here. You want me to record? Huh? You want me to record? Do you want to record? I'd rather not be on film. We are now. Yep.